Beginning in October 2023, Israel and Hamas have been engaged in a protracted conflict with no apparent end in sight. More than 25,000 people have died as a result of the violence, the most of them civilians, and hundreds of thousands more have been forced from their homes. The battle was mostly started by Hamas's unexpected raid on an Israeli border crossing, during which they took over 200 Israeli soldiers and civilians hostage. Since then, Hamas has fired thousands of rockets and missiles against Israeli cities and villages, while Israel has undertaken a massive military effort to destroy Hamas's infrastructure and liberate the hostages. Numerous international players have attempted to step in and assist in a peaceful resolution to the crisis, including the US, Qatar and Egypt. They have put out a number of plans to put an end to the fighting and set up a prisoner exchange in which Hamas would free the Israeli hostages that it is holding captive and Israel would free the Palestinian inmates in its jails. All of these initiatives, nevertheless, have failed because neither party is prepared to accept the demands of the other. So before we continue, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the latest updates on geopolitics and economics. Also, kindly like and comment on this video for the algorithm to reach a wider audience. OK, let's continue. Israel, which it views as its enemy and occupier, has received a number of ultimatums from the militant organization Hamas, which rules the Gaza Strip. Beginning in October 2023, Israel has been under siege. Hamas has requested that it halt its military offensive and withdraw its tanks and personnel from the besieged zone. Also, Hamas has insisted that Israel free all 5,000 Palestinian detainees from its prisons, where they are imprisoned without legal representation and in appalling conditions. Further, Hamas has insisted that Israel stop interfering or acting aggressively in its internal affairs and acknowledge its right and authority as the exclusive ruler and representative of the Palestinian people in Gaza. These are the conditions that Hamas has set in order to get the estimated 136 Israeli hostages freed. Israel is being threatened by Hamas, which views the detainees as both war booty and negotiating chips, and has threatened to execute them if it does not accede to its demands. The Israeli government, under the direction of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, has categorically rejected Hamas's demands, Netanyahu calling them unacceptable and terms of surrender. Israel, which views Hamas as a terrorist group and an opponent of peace, has declared that it will not yield to its threats or blackmail. Benjamin Netanyahu has declared that he would not back down from his demands for Israel's security and sovereignty, nor will he permit Hamas to continue posing a threat to both Israel and the surrounding area. Plus, Netanyahu declared that he would not free the Palestinian detainees, referring to them as murderers and rapists. According to Netanyahu, the release of these prisoners will only lead to an increase in terrorism and violence against Israelis, as they are the ones who killed and injured numerous Israelis. The public and the captive families are putting increasing pressure on Netanyahu to obtain the release of the hostages as the Middle East conflict intensifies. The Israeli Prime Minister has come under fire for the way he has handled the situation, which has led to the kidnapping of multiple Israeli soldiers by Hamas. But he has also promised to keep going on the attack until he achieves total victory, meaning he won't give up until he has destroyed the terrorist network and brought peace and security back to the area. As well, Netanyahu has reiterated how vehemently he opposes the concept of a Palestinian state, claiming that it would put Israel in jeopardy. According to his arguments, any agreement that grants the Palestinians independence and sovereignty will put an adversarial force at Israel's doorstep and make it easier for Hamas and other extreme organizations to attack Israel. He has pushed on complete Israeli security control over Gaza and the West Bank, as well as all area west of the Jordan River. He has declared that Israel has the right and the need to protect itself and its population, rejecting any international pressure or interference. Besides death and damage, the conflict between Israel and Hamas has triggered economic and humanitarian problems in both Gaza and Israel, as well as unrest and violence in other areas of the world. 
The majority of people in Gaza live in poverty and under blockade. The United Nations, the Red Cross and other humanitarian organizations have issued warnings about the terrible conditions there as well as the dearth of basic supplies and services. Severe shortages of food, water, energy and medical supplies have been reported, along with the possibility of disease outbreaks and psychological anguish. Israel has also been negatively impacted, both in terms of its economy and infrastructure, as well as the disturbance of daily life. International responses to the war have been mixed, with some endorsing the parties participating and others criticizing them. Numerous nations and groups have demanded a rapid ceasefire and a diplomatic settlement to the situation. But some have also shown their support or animosity for Israel or Hamas, which has sparked protests, conflicts and attacks in numerous locations across the globe. As a result, the war has gained worldwide attention and has consequences for both human rights and regional and global security. The world community has been closely monitoring Israel and Hamas's war, and it has urged the two sides to exercise restraint and return to talks. It has, meanwhile, also voiced dissatisfaction and condemnation over the ongoing bloodshed and the slow progress being made toward a peaceful settlement of the dispute. The primary ally of Israel, the United States, has called for a two-state resolution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, while also endorsing Israel's right to self-defense. According to U.S. statements, the U.S. is dedicated to assisting the parties in reaching a comprehensive and long-lasting peace agreement that recognizes Israel's security and calls for the creation of an autonomous and viable state for the Palestinian people. A ceasefire and a resumption of the peace process have also been demanded by the European Union, the Arab League and other regional and international players. They have emphasized the necessity of respecting international law, human rights and the need for a political conversation and humanitarian ceasefire. In order to help with the talks and the rehabilitation of the impacted areas, they have also offered their support and collaboration. As the war enters its fourth month, the question remains, will there be a breakthrough or a breakdown in the hostage crisis? And what will be the consequences for the region and the world? Thank you for watching this video. If you found it informative and helpful, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We would love to hear from you. See you next time.